Hello everyone, bringing you a video today talking about this, which is a Second World War era Royal Navy issue inflatable life belt. They weren't only issued during the Second World War, they were issued into the early 1950s as well. And it's a fairly rudimentary uh, form of life-saving gear. Uh, it is literally a rubber tube in a cotton cover uh, on, with tapes tying it around the, the upper body, basically around the, the base of the chest. First introduced in October of 1939, it harkens back to a swimming belt which had been on issue to the Royal Navy during the Great War, but had actually been discontinued in the interwar period. So there was a return to a similar design. It isn't the same, but it's a similar design and a very simple one at that. And they were issued individually to officers and ratings uh, serving aboard ship. And as I say, it's a rudimentary form of, of life-saving gear. If you happen to go overboard, it's better than nothing, although as I say, used into the early 1950s. In the early 1950s, the replacement for this was a far superior design, essentially very similar to that that's still used today in a, a yoke type uh, life-saving jacket, which goes up over the head and forms a, a large bladder uh, on the chest, which obviously means it keeps you your head out of the water, even if you're unconscious. Uh, no, such, uh, no such features on this, of course. It is a very, very simple design. Early examples do show a piece which comes up over the sort of stern, sternum area here, but the standard type is this one uh, rubber ring essentially around the body, tied around the body, and we'll, we'll see how it's worn here, and then we'll have a look at it in a bit more detail laid out on the blanket. It's tied around the body with one loop up around the back of the neck here, which ties off onto this loop on the, uh, the front of the, uh, the life belt there. And then there are tapes which tie around the front here, and these attach onto the back. So we'll have a look at the back of this now and you just see how it ties around the body. And you can see at the back here where the tapes come round, cross over, and then can be tied off around the front. And you have the tape at the top here just looping around the neck, as you can see there. So very simple design from that point of view. Uh, it's literally just tied on. And obviously once it's inflated, if you go in the water, it'll pull up underneath your, your underarms and give you some support. We'll have a look at this in a little bit more detail now and look at the, the features of the design. So now we can have a look at this in more detail. Unfortunately, as you can see, that the jersey cover, there's a cotton jersey cover over the rubber uh, bladder here, has become a little bit discoloured over the years. In fact, it, it appears this has been left in the sun, sun at some point, so it's a bit sun bleached. But that's, uh, that's by the by. These were also made in white, not only blue. You have the inflation tube here at the front, as you can see. And this is a very simple mouthpiece there. And this is actually flexible rubber as well, as you can see. Bring this up, hopefully it'll focus. And then that just unscrews like that to allow you to inflate it and then to close it. So very, very simple. Cotton tape, cotton twill tape uh, loops there. We've got one piece that loops up around the neck there, as we saw before. And that just ties off on this side around that loop there. And then at the rear, you can see here, just stitched onto the end of the rubber bladder, and you can see it's a red, at the light in there, a red rubber bladder, just stitched onto the end of there where it's glued together. You have the rear tapes and two long cotton twill tapes that just tie around, around the back and then you can knot them at the front. So very, very, very simple design. There's really not a huge amount to it uh, from that point of view. Very simple to manufacture, just a, a rubber bladder, jersey cover, and then the tape sewn onto the cover and sewn onto the end of the rubber there. Uh, and then obviously the, all you really have to, to add then is the, uh, the tube glued into the, the rubber bladder. Very, very simple to manufacture. And anyone who's familiar with the, the life belts issued to British uh, troops for assault landings will see the design is essentially exactly the same as this, just made in uh, less durable materials, more sort of throwaway materials. They're made cheaper, obviously, because they're not supposed to be continually used Unlike these, these are supposed to see continuous use, uh, you know, whilst the sailor is uh, is aboard ship. Uh, whenever they need to, to don one of these, they will do. Whereas the assault life jacket, the assault life belt, is obviously designed for a uh, essentially a one use item, if you will. So that's the life belt. There's an accessory to talk about with this, which is the Eastco life belt light, and we have the pouch for one of these here. It has a big belt loop in the back there, as you can see, or uh, life belt loop it fits right across so it just slides on from one side like this Put the tape through as well and then it just fits over the middle like that just pull the, 
the tape through for the uh... oh no nope, that comes up on the other side there we go that's it so it just sits on the on the middle of the life belt like that a detail of royal navy kit i'll just point out here is the type stamp name on the rear of the life belt like pouch and on the life belt itself royal navy ratings were provided with a type stamp which is a basically wooden blocks with the letters worked into them set up in the right configuration to give the first letter the first name and then the last name and obviously this has been owned by g evert and both of those have been stamped in white with his type stamp black was used on white clothing and white on blue clothing and and equipment and so forth like this which shows obviously that the life belt like pouch here and the life belt itself were both issued to the same man and these did come together as a set so that's quite nice in this compartment here you have room for the battery box and this as you'll see is heavily corroded uh, but this is the one that came with it it's actually bits and pieces in there so i'm not going to open it up uh, but that's quite heavily rusted and then the life uh, the life belt light itself on its wire sits in here with the clip and that can be clipped up onto the the shoulder strap i do have another example of these uh, which i'll just grab now and we can have a, a look at the the east Coast light in a little bit more detail though that's something i'll probably cover in another video at some point although that's probably something i'll cover in another video at some point and here we are it's still in its box as you can see here if we bring this up we'll focus on the label you can see the east Coast life jacket light Then it's wrapped paper inside. There were loads of these around for sale not that long ago. I think they probably still are uh, easily obtainable. Um, you can see here, this actually has a paper label on the battery box, slightly different design of battery box. Uh, Eastco life jacket light. And you just plug that in to the socket there to make it work, basically. And as you can see, again, we have the light with the clip to clip up onto the, the shoulder strap. So that's the Eastco Life Jacket Light, and as I say, introduced in 1943 for use with these. And one thing I'll just mention here, some of the information in this video comes from Royal Navy Uniforms by Martin Braley, 1930-1945, so it gives you some of the pre-war details as well. I can highly recommend picking up a copy of this if you are interested in Royal Navy uniform, equipment and so forth. It's very, very good. It covers a lot of detail and it provides a lot of the actual AFOs for the introduction of various items. Now, obviously, there's always a, a slight lag from the introduction of, of an item uh, in an AFO to it actually seeing wide scale issue. Uh, but it does give you some outline dates and so forth to work from, which is very, very useful. So I can highly recommend this if you'd like to learn more about Royal Navy uh, uniform and so forth. And here we have the life belt with the pouch for the life belt light fitted. And you can see the tube for the uh, for inflating the life belt is just looped behind there. And then we have the light clipped up onto the, the neck strap of the life belt there. So that's what it would look like in use. So I hope you found it interesting looking at this, as I always say. If you have and you'd like to see more from the channel, please do consider subscribing if you haven't already. And whether you're newly subscribing or you've previously subscribed, please do make sure you hit the little bell with the notification button down below. That will, of course, alert you when I upload future videos. If you really like my uploads and you'd like to support the channel, you can. Both Patreon and PayPal are linked down below. And a massive thank you, as ever, to everybody who supports the channel using those two methods. It really is greatly appreciated, all of you. Thank you very much indeed. If you'd like to follow the channel on social media, you can. Facebook, Instagram and Twitter are all linked down below. If you'd like to get in contact but you don't really use social media, there is, of course, an email address down there as well. But that's everything for this video. So, until next time, bye for now.